how did Napoleon help found the canning industry? What state's economy was revolutionized by chicken? Do you know what hosiery makers mean by gauge and denier? How will electronics find this family a place to sleep? Industry on Parade, a brand new look at our America, produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. Tin plate by the ton arrives at a can making plant at Terminal Island, California. Tin plate used in so-called tin cans is mostly steel, of course, with only the thinnest of layers of tin to protect against corrosion. And here, on the side of the metal that will be the inside, they put on a layer of lacquer and then send the sheets through a drying oven one-tenth of a mile long. The can maker, despite his high speed, mass production, is governed by the most demanding requirements as to the size and shape of his product. Every can in an order must be exactly like every other, or it will gum up the machinery when it is being filled and sealed. Here at Continental Can, they've developed some amazing machines to make sure they are all alike, even though millions of cans are produced each day. This tin plate, cut into irregular strips, will now become tops of cans to hold tuna or salmon in a process almost too fast for the eye to follow. Tops and bottoms are identical, except that the latter will be put on right here at the plant, while the tops will be shipped out to the packer to be put on after the cans are filled. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the great factory, the sides of the cans are shaped, crimped, and sealed. The tremendous output made possible by automatic operations like this has not only held the cost of cans constant for 40 years, but helped create our modern system of distributing and merchandising the products of our farms and factories. With bottoms added, the cans are given an air pressure test and those that pass move away for a dizzy ride to the shipping department. Food was first packed in airtight containers to supply the troops of Napoleon's army, and the humble can has grown steadily in military importance since that day. Firms like CCC also aid in the defense of the nation, as here at the company's plant in Coffeyville, Kansas, by devoting part of their experience and facilities to the production of goods that are strictly for the armed forces the same skills that brought can making to its present peak of economy and efficiency are applied here to the manufacture of aircraft components. Prior to World War II, whenever national emergencies arose, industry was disrupted from top to bottom. Now it has realized its ability to expand into totally different fields and has created the greatest potential for war production the world has ever seen while at the same time turning out civilian products in sufficient quantity to raise our standard of living to levels unequaled in history. The firm counts on the people who toil here, making aircraft flaps, doors, elevators, struts, bomb racks, and the like, to become the key personnel in any expansion of military production that may be forced upon us. Workers like these are a constantly trained nucleus around which could be built up rapidly an even more powerful military production team than that which functioned so smoothly in the 40s. You'll notice that Rosie the Riveter's still on the job. The planes are vastly more complex than they were 10 short years ago. And it's only by keeping our hand in at the job of building them that we can even hope to stay ahead of the factories behind the Iron Curtain, where the emphasis is almost entirely on military production. There aren't any war industries or peacetime industries anymore. Now it's just industry.
Today's frontiersman does not wear a coonskin cap or shoulder a hunting rifle. More likely, he's wearing a laboratory apron with a stirring rod. Today's pioneer, the scientist, finds new lands to explore in test tubes. His hunting is done with a microscope. The scientists and engineer working with the businessman tamed the wilderness with steamboats and railroads, provided harvesters to cut the prairie grain and feed a growing nation. Scientists harnessed the power of rivers, coal and oil and helped give Americans high quality mass produced goods. Yes, today, America's new frontiers are in science. Here's a foul business that's really booming. No reflection on the character of the enterprise, Fowl is the product of this, one of the companies that in the past few years has made the state of Georgia the foremost producer of broilers in the entire country. Who can think of broiling this cute little fellow? Well, as they say, time flies. And after three weeks, our cute little fellow and his buddies are sent out from the hatchery of Jesse D. Jewell Incorporated to poultry farmers all over the Gainesville area, there to be brought to maturity. It's the best of food, care, best of everything for about seven or eight weeks on the chicken range. When they're at their plumpest and still tender, the birds are ready to go into a crate for the trip back to the processor. In former times, they'd have been slaughtered and plucked, then packed in ice for shipment to the retailer. Now that's all changed, and the great majority will be cleaned, jointed, and frozen before shipment for delivery to the customer. Fresh, clean, and free of any waste whatever. By adapting factory methods to the farm, Georgia's poultry raisers have developed an industry now second in the state only to cotton. And here's where their willingness to adopt new ways of doing things pays off for you and me. This broiler, as all chickens raised for eating purposes are known, happens to be southern fried, but north and south. Fried, stewed, broiled, or in a salad, we're all eating far more chicken these days than we used to eat. And whether we know it or not, the chicken we put away is far better than it used to be. Here's a plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where employees get free manicures on company time. No, it's not to keep up their morale. These Davenport hosiery mills workers handle hundreds of pairs of sheer stockings a day, and every precaution is taken to prevent snags. The hosiery making process begins with the mounting of cones of nylon yarn on the knitting machine. The stocking emerges as a flat piece, reinforced at the top, heel, and toe, that now must be seamed. Any woman can tell you that 60-gauge, 15-denier nylon stockings are very fine stockings indeed, but comparatively few know that gauge refers to the number of stitches per inch and a half of fabric, and denier to the weight of the yarn. Placed in protective cotton sleeves, the stockings go into the dye vat. Nylons are shaped by being slipped damp over leg-shaped forms and then steamed. This causes them to hold their shape through innumerable launderings. The products of modern hosiery mills are far advanced over the shapeless, short-lived stockings that mother used to wear. Now they're made to fit snugly but without binding at all points. Top, knee, calf, ankle, heel, and toe and all sorts of up-to-date techniques and machines give absolute uniformity of color. Laid out on a white table under strong overhead lights, every stocking is individually inspected for the most minute defects. Because it's mechanically impossible to make all stockings exactly the same, skilled workers go through them matching up perfect pairs. And in the quality control department, samples taken from each run of every knitting machine get a workout on a wear and endurance machine that simulates the strain put on a stocking by the human leg. Doesn't look like a knee in action, but it's all the same to the stocking. A length test on this device will reveal the fabric's strength and resilience. In addition to quality control work, 
the technicians try out new ideas for making the product look better, wear longer, and cost less, a number of which ideas have already been adopted. Finally, the paired, perfect stockings are stamped with the trademark, folded and boxed, three pairs to a box. We've had nylons less than 15 years now, but they've long since become universally accepted. Here's a young lady who's never worn any other kind, except for the bobby socks that for her are now definitely just a memory. In America, thousands of true life success stories are being written every day. Here we have the opportunity to make of our lives whatever we care to make of them, and there is no limit. Men starting at the bottom have every opportunity to climb to the top. This constant movement of men upwards in the ranks of business is one reason why American industry has never stopped progressing. Someone is always carrying a new idea up the ladder. This in turn helps everyone. For always new ideas, constant improvements of methods and products mean higher living standards for all Americans. <laughs> Picture of a man arranging for hotel accommodations. Not for himself, but for thousands of travelers. The product of a Denver company called Reserve a Room Incorporated, the electronic board can be mounted in bus stations, rail terminals, airports. Wherever in a town you'll find a traveler in search of a room. Here at an airport, we'll see how it works. Some of the people on any plane, bus, or train have neglected to make reservations in advance. Now, plunked down in a strange city, they can start touring from hotel to hotel until they find one with accommodations available. Or they can study the board, see how many singles are available, how many doubles, where they are, and how much they cost. At a phone right there, they call the hotel of their choice and make the reservation. The hotel man spins a dial and their room is taken out of circulation here and on other boards in the city. We Americans are a people on the move and our great transportation industries are making it constantly easier for us to travel farther and faster than ever before. But it doesn't do us much good to zip off to a city hundreds of miles away if we can't find a place to stay when we get there. Here's one family that does have accommodations located with no strain, no pain. It seems you can do nearly everything by push button these days, even rent a room. <laughs> 